Hey, what's up guys? It's the last Sparty here and in today's video we're going to be looking at the tier 8 German heavy cruiser, the Prince Eugen. And this ship is one of my favorite tier 8 premiums at the moment. And I'm going to kind of in this video give you some tips and tricks on how to play the ship and uh, just some general cruiser tips as well. So without further ado, let's get into the replay. So the tier 8 German heavy cruiser. The Prince Oregon. Well, it's a ship that uh, has recently gotten some buffs. Uh, I don't even know what patch, but um, it's recent enough to still be talking about it. Of course, I'm talking about the heal that it got, and uh, it's a rather significant buff to its HP. It suddenly becomes uh, more equal to a uh, eight point f tier 8.5 than a tier 8 and that is pretty significant because if you get a tier 8.5 well you can more easily compete with things higher than yourself in terms of tier so tier 9s and tier 10s and we'll kind of see that throughout this replay here but I do think that's actually how the Prince Oregon at least at this current moment uh, feels on the NA server it feels like a much stronger ship and of course I'm not making the argument for uh, tier 8 uh, tier 8 ships having heals and I mean whether you're for or against that, and I think there's actually very valid arguments for both, um, I wouldn't be too opposed to that, but I don't think that the Prince Oregon uh, actually necessarily needed it, but nonetheless, uh, it is it's something that has happened. So, uh, well, the, the, what do the Germans do in general? Well, the Germans do two things well. They've got good armor uh, at closer ranges, as well as uh, very nice guns, both HE and AP. Now, if you're looking for statistics or captain bills or anything like that, I did a video, I think, about three weeks ago uh, on this ship, and I explained exactly that. So, uh, am I going to be doing that in this video? No. But if you'd like to know my captain build and that sort of thing, uh, you can check out that video. I'll leave a link in the description for you guys. This video is going to be focused mainly on tips and tricks, uh, tips and tricks, and just general gameplay. Um, tips, I guess. So that being said, um, yeah, go check that other video out if you'd like. Uh, but so far, we've been able to pretty much punish this Minotaur at will. Uh, the first salvo, I think, one Citadel, or maybe two. And then the following salvo, we got a few more. And then a couple follow-up uh, for another two Citadels. So we're already up to seven and nearly 60k damage thus far. And, well, that's all down to our... No, oh, luck, honestly. Uh, it has been much more than that. However, I, I did put myself in a decent position. And I'd I'll point this out in a little bit, too. But I'd just like to highlight my first topic, uh, which is positioning. This is just general cruiser positioning, but it, I think it especially apl applies to the uh, this ship. Is You always want to be in the second line. So if you look on the mini map here, we've got uh, Moskva being one point. Uh, the Shimakaze and this battleship, which I can't see the name of, being a second point. And if you draw a straight line between them, that's your first line. Then in the second line, you've got me and then this Republic. And then the third line, you got these two uh, sniper battleships. And a well, fourth line carrier, but uh, we don't count that. Uh, so that's kind of how you got to look at this uh, ship. And just your gameplay in general is, you know, where... How can I always, especially in cruisers, how can I be in that second line? Um, and, you know, kind of with your rather uh, lackluster uh, concealment in the uh, Prince Eugen at, let's see, what is it, 11.5? Uh, yeah, it looks like 11.5. Uh, you're not the most detectable, uh, most stealthy cruiser. And you are rather large, too. So, obviously, uh, your concealment is going to be uh, hindered because of that. So what do you have to do? You just have to sit a little bit farther back. And like I said, always be in that second line of fire. And then you should be fine. And honestly, at 15, 16 kilometers, you have good enough shell velocity and good enough range to, you know, pretty easily hit your targets. You you know, granted these guys are just straight up reversing, but uh, nonetheless, you should uh, still have a somewhat easy time doing so. And, you know... If you also angle, like, notice how I'm angled. Uh, I'm angled at about maybe 50, 45, 50 degrees to these guys here in the Sector G10. 
Uh, this line, I'm not doing a very good job of angling to. Now I am. Uh, but, you know, minimizing the amount of people that are shooting at me is kind of the next thing. And that'll tie in later with surv survivability and that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, always angling and angling away is uh, the key there. So, positioning-wise, uh, it's been pretty flawless, I would say, thus far. Um, I've kind of hovered around C, kind of stopped them from pushing into C. Obviously, this Moscow is also doing a great job of actually taking significantly more HP uh, than I am, which I, I'm fine with, and, that, and frankly, he's doing his job quite well. Um, but as long as I'm not getting focused, that's really all I care about. Uh, if, he, if this guy needs to be a sacrifice, then he needs to be a sacrifice. Uh, to the team but someone has to be a sacrifice some of the time and if he is going to go down i got to make sure to get uh, these guys killed so that is my number one goal right now with that being said i also want to minimize the damage that i'm taking so i'm going to use this island here to my 12 o'clock to block myself from one ship uh, the Lion, two ships, and Prince Oregon, three ships. Meanwhile, I'm focusing on this Cleveland one, mainly because, well, he doesn't have a heal, so he can't heal anything back. That's why I'm not really focusing on Bismarck until, obviously, I can't shoot the Cleveland anymore. Um, and then, yeah, so that's, that's basically another good rule of thumb, is always shoot the targets that, well, they can't get any health back. So, for example, destroyers, that's why, it, one of the reasons why it's so, uh, so necessary to shoot destroyers is for that reason they can't gain any HP back whereas battleships and a lot of uh, higher tier cruisers uh, actually can do that so that is something just to uh, uh, remember so again with my positioning I'm still in that second line if we're taking a look at the minimap the Missouri is one point Shimakaze is second and Moskva is third nice straight line across that's the first line then Republic myself and the Kerr first second line a very nice setup here uh, and this is very hard to break if you are a um, if you're the enemy team and of course my position like I said behind this island uh, makes it very hard to dig me out uh, either I have to make a mistake or the enemy team has to uh, utilize a lot of their forces to actually dig me out so again very nice positioning there and the other thing is I create a one-on-one -on -one scenario with this Bismarck. So I can actually uh, use my cruiser capabilities. Uh, if you're if you're not playing a cruiser and you're fighting more than one ship at a time, uh, chances are you're not playing the cruiser correctly. And uh, that's, I would say, a general rule of thumb for all ships. But, you know, it's a good... It's not, a ba it's not bad advice at all. Obviously, uh, if you are... If you do have a higher skill level... You, you know, you can fight more people at once, but uh, certainly I would definitely recommend only fighting one person at a time. It just makes your whole life a lot easier. And that kind of goes ties back into, you know, being in that second line as well. So we end up killing the Cleveland as well as the Bismarck, which is very nice. And we're going to start pushing. And like I said, now that the Hipper has a heal, uh, you can kind of do this before, but the heal does make it a little bit easier. Uh, I'm able to just push my way through without giving a, a rat's ass honestly so well what am i going to do i'm just going to sit here and slow down because of my good armor because of my good heal i can sit here and shoot this amagi again using my good positioning uh to shield myself uh, from the lion and the prince organ and to only create a one-on-one -on -one scenario and that is again something i've already detailed uh, and, you know, kind of going back to that German AP, well, uh, the first salvo 3k, second salvo 4k, now I finally realize that this guy's actually really slowing down and actually reversing. Uh, and then I adjust my aim, pop my heal, and let's see how this salvo turns out. 24, and he goes down to uh, 16, so 6k, again, a very nice salvo. And this follow-up salvo will be even better. And that's kind of how the German AP works. If you're broadside, you do a heck ton of damage. Uh, but as soon as the target starts to angle, well, that damage uh, rather quickly drops off. But, good for you, you do have good HE, so you can punish people rather quickly. And effectively as well. So thus far, you know, like I said, positioning, uh, keeping, uh, keeping yourself in a second line of fire. And the third one, which is, I guess, coming up here, is conserving your HP. 
And I see midway bombers are coming in, so I'm doing everything possible to avoid them. Going back to my positioning, look, I got a Republic next to me. I got my catapult up. You know, I'm pretty much full A, so, or not full A, full, uh, full health, so most of my A is still intact. Uh, so, you know, I'm able to uh, keep my survivability up by, I wouldn't say sitting in the back, but, you know, taking a step back is how I would describe it. And that's something that if you want to increase your skill level altogether, that is one big thing that you need to do is just increase your survivability. And I'm not saying sit in the back. I'm saying be smart about your decisions. So, uh, again, look at, looking at team score or the uh, yeah team score, I guess. I I'm a bottom tier. I'm a tier 8. And this is, and grant a lot of their tier 10s were on the other side of the map. You know, still, I, I don't want to be throwing my ship away in this situation where, well... You know, I'm I'm a I do think I'm a good player statistically. I'm a good player, and uh, you know, this is something that you have to realize is, you know, you gotta survive, and if you want to win more games, as uh, as a decent or good player, you gotta you gotta make those decent or good plays uh, more often than not, and you know, uh, surviving is uh, about half the battle, honestly. So after recording this for now the third time, um, af after, well, not having my recording software actually record, and then just having a super blurry screen, I hope this works. Uh, so, and if it does, well, I'm, I'm guessing you're seeing it on YouTube, so I guess that's one way to tell. But, uh, yes, this line's gonna go down here, and the uh, game will end shortly thereafter, so, uh, and I've kind of hit all the points that I need to, so... Uh, I'll let this ride out right here. So not a bad match overall, uh, by any means. We ended up with the 816,000 and a decent amount of XP uh, and free XP, as well as a Confederate with 178k damage, two ships killed, eight Citadels, seven fires, and all the rest. Uh, team score-wise, 28-51. Uh, sublime match, I, I have to say. And for a Tier 8 cruiser, uh, bottom tier... With, I mean, to be honest, our Kerfers didn't really do anything. Our Republic did, I guess, a decent amount. Moskva, I mean, he did his job in distracting them. Uh, I would say this was a very nice game and pretty representative of my recent experiences with this ship. So it's a very sh fun ship to play. And I think using these uh, tips and tricks and that sort of thing to uh, increase your game, uh, increase the <laughs> amount of damage and overall win rate and stuff like that of your game it'll make this ship more enjoyable that's what i'm trying to say i guess and uh looking at damage distribution not too bad uh half of a wither the f whoa 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 i don't want that oh it's so zoomed in uh okay well we're just gonna have to zoom it in whatever 91 shell uh shell hits seven fires around eight percent fire chance not terrible Again, we didn't get shot at too much. That's that's okay by me. And twenty-seven thousand damage received. Again, I'm fine that by that because most of that damage was taken in the last you know five minutes uh, of the replay ending. So again, I'm fine with that. Um, I don't know how to do this, but there we go. And then finally, the credits and XP. Who said you don't? Who needs Missouri? When you've got a premium account and a Prince Oregon. Uh, and even if you don't have a premium account, 400 grand is still a very solid uh, change. I, I, don't, I don't know. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And if you want to comment something, feel free. Just let me know how your, day, your guys' day is going. It is a Friday. So, uh, anyways, I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.